If you want to apply to medical school in Canada, you're in the right place because today we're going to be revealing the stats of the top medical schools in Canada. But we're not just presenting numbers, we're also going to be highlighting potential trends and different patterns that you need to pay attention to. So trust me, you want to watch till the end. Kicking off our exploration with the Max Rady School of Medicine in Manitoba. With over 1,067 applicants applying to this, the competition is definitely fierce. But what caught my eye was the astounding GPA of 4.40 on the AGPA scale. The Max Rady's towering GPA requirement is a signal for students to pay attention to their academic requirements when applying. The GPA is an extremely important part of the application to the school. In addition, the average MCAT score is 514, which is really competitive and pretty high for the country. Therefore, applicants need to make sure that they pay attention to their GPA and MCAT before everything else. Moving on, let's explore the Memorial University of Newfoundland. They don't specify the number of applicants that applied to the medical school each year, unfortunately, but what has piqued my interest so far is the balanced approach they take towards the applicants. In terms of the GPA, they require a 3.85, which has been the average accepted GPA so far, and the MCAT has been an average of 507. However, they do specify that the Newfoundland pool had an average between a 125 and 127 in each section on the MCAT. But do keep in mind that they do prefer students from Newfoundland and Labrador, so the statistics can vary for out-of-province applicants. Let's talk about Dalhousie University now, which is located in Nova Scotia. Last year, they received applications from 1,782 applicants. 621 of those were from the Maritime Provinces, and 1,141 were outside the Maritime Provinces, including Ontario. Their total class size is on the smaller side with 148 students. The average accepted GPA was a 3.9, while the MCAT score was a 506. Keep in mind that these are average stats. This doesn't mean that the people who are applying from the maritime provinces have the same stats as people from outside. I would assume that the people applying from out of province have to have much higher marks, so keep that in mind. These numbers are similar to Memorial University, but what's interesting to note is the average accepted GPA. Last year, the average accepted GPA was lower and it was a 3.8. This year, it has increased, meaning that there is an increased trend in the GPA. Their average accepted MCAT score has pretty much stayed the same since last year. However, this is a definitive signal that the Dalhousie Medical School is becoming more competitive for in-province and out-of-province applicants. This means that you need a very strong GPA to get an admission into this school. McGill University, based out of Montreal, is next. They actually have one of the most in-depth statistics, so we're just going to be sticking to the few key points. They received a total of 1,235 applications this year, which was actually pretty low because McGill is a very popular school, but it might be explained by the French proficiency test that they've introduced for every single stream this year. The average accepted GPA was a 3.88, and that was the average accepted interview offer GPA as well, but the applicants had an average GPA of about 3.78, so you can see how they filtered people out that way. The stats for their out-of-province applicants are as follows. The students who applied out-of-province had an average GPA of a 3.83, with those receiving interviews having an average GPA of a 3.95. Interestingly, the average accepted GPA was a 3.94 out of this pool. Most people who applied, got interviews and got accepted had a 4.0 GPA based on the mode GPA. Honestly, this has been a trend for quite a while, so I wouldn't expect the GPA to go down any lower this year. So if you want to be considered competitive in this school, based on these stats, you would need between a 3.9 to a 4 GPA. Now let's talk about UBC or University of British Columbia. This year, they received around 2,807 applications, which is lower than last year actually, which was 2,829 applications. You might be wondering why these GPAs are so high. This is because like Ottawa, McGill doesn't look at the MCAT, so their main focus is on your GPA and your CASPER test. They invited 358 interviewees to come and interview for their school, and their total class size in the end was 133. Now let's talk about UBC, or University of British Columbia. This year, they received around 2,807 applications, which is lower than last year actually, which was 2,829 applications. 
I would imagine that this number would only increase rather than decrease in the coming years given the amount of people aiming to apply to medical school. The overall percentage of applicants that were accepted was 88%, which is fairly high. As for the number of students who were invited for an interview, this number was 740, out of which 100 were out of province students. The average GPA for the people who were offered interviews was a 90%, which roughly equates to 3.9. However, UBC is one of those schools that really requires people to have good extracurriculars as well. Although UBC does not provide specific stats for the accepted pool, I would only imagine that the average accepted percentage for the applicants that have applied will only go up higher after the 89%. This again reinforces the idea of how important grades are when you're applying to medical school. Now we're going to make our way east to the University of Saskatchewan. Note that their stats only go up to the 2022 cycle, so keep that in mind. They received a total of 795 applications, out of which they interviewed 354 students. Out of this, 98 were out-of-province students. What's really interesting between the in-province and out-of-province stats is the MCAT score cutoff that is required. For in-province students, the cutoff is a 492, whereas for an out-of-province student, the cutoff is 521. Their class size is 100. When it comes to the average stats for this medical school, keep in mind that they don't provide specific stats for out-of-province versus in-province applicants. Saskatchewan uses percentage instead of GPA, and the average accepted percentage this past year was an 87%, which roughly translates to a 3.88. But people who were admitted had an average GPA between 75% to 97%, and the average accepted MCAT score was a 511. They do provide raw Casper scores as well, and from the stats, it seems like anywhere between a third and fourth quartile is what you need to get into the school. They also provide deciles for interview scores, and this really helps show us what the stats are really like. For context, anyone in the top six deciles or the top 60% were generally admitted. Out of the class of 100, only 18 people were in the bottom 40% of the interview scores. The majority of the people were in the top 10%, which isn't surprising. It seems that based on these trends, the MCAT has been increasingly more important for this medical school, as the average accepted MCAT score went up from 509 to 511 between 2021 to 2022. The average grades for the accepted pool has not changed in the past few years, so I don't expect it to change anytime soon. In terms of the interview, it is crucial for you to do really well if you want to stand out and be in the top 10%. The University of Calgary is up next. They received a total of 1,991 applications, but that isn't much of an increase from last year. The stats also haven't changed much. The average MCAT was a 513, which is up one point from last year, and the average GPA is a 3.89, up from a 3.87 in the previous year. The MMI scores did not move at all, surprisingly. This just goes to show that Calgary is putting a strong emphasis on stats recently. This is not to say that the interview is not a strong component of the application, which it is. Rather, it shows that the applicant pool is just becoming more competitive. We hope you enjoyed the second part of our medical school analysis series. I hope this provides more insight into the process and lets you tailor your application to make sure you can fit these categories. However, just know that if you try your hardest, you will get in and just don't give up. As you might have noticed, we've also changed our posting schedule to post every Saturday instead of Monday because I know a lot of you are busy on weekdays. Therefore, stay tuned every single Saturday for a new MedBoys video and we'll see you next Saturday.